300 newton child and a 300 newton child sit on either end of a two meter long seesaw. Where along the seesaw should the pivot be placed to ensure rotational equilibrium? We'll call this one child number one. We'll call this one child number <laughs> <laughs> You laugh at my children? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to attempt to draw a child. It's just not going to work. Okay, so I have my two children. Uh, okay, 400 Newton child. What does that refer to, a 400 Newton child, man? That's the force of gravity. It's the same thing as saying, like, call, calling you, me a 150 pound person, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. So that is simply the force of gravity. So we have the force of gravity one and the force of gravity two. Uh, we're trying to figure out where to place the pivot. If you could please take a moment or a few moments and draw your free body diagram. I want to see, I want to make sure everybody has the same free body diagram, but I want you to work on it on your own for a few moments. Again, we're drawing a free body diagram of all the forces acting on the seesaw. Oh, I'm sorry. One small piece of information that is left out of this problem is that the seesaw has zero mass. Without that piece of information, you actually cannot solve the problem. So please be aware, the seesaw itself is amazingly massless. <laughs> forces in our free body diagram. Lily, give me a force in our free body diagram. We'll do the one for the second child as well. We have force of gravity one and force of gravity two. Other forces, Dan. The seesaw. The seesaw has zero mass, so I'm actually not going to put a force of gravity at the seesaw in there, simply because it's, it's non-existent. If this were a complete free body diagram of the seesaw, what would be happening to the seesaw class? It would be accelerating down. So this cannot be a complete free body diagram. Heather? Force normal from the pivot, the fulcrum. So this point right here is going to have a force normal. Class, are there force normals acting on the children? Do, they, do those force normals act on the seesaw? No. So are they in our free body diagram? No. So this is a complete free body diagram. At this point, why are we not going to sum the forces? Heather? Why don't we need to? What, I mean, we've always started by summing the forces. That seems sort of like a logical place to go. We sum the forces. Why not? What are we trying to find, Lo? D, the lever arm, right? Is the lever arm included at all in summing the forces? No. So there's really no reason to sum the forces at this point. Instead, we're going to sum the torques. Whenever we sum the torques, what do we need to identify? Andy? Um, the theta. No. The no. I'll give you a hint. It was in yellow. <laughs> We have to identify our <laughs> axis of rotation. Who can tell me what, and what is the only logical axis of rotation for this problem and why? And check. It'd be from the, where the, the fulcrum is. Because? Because that's where it's rotating. <laughs> Ah, uh, you actually, because this is going to be in uh, static equilibrium, you could pick any axis of rotation you want. But why is this the logical one to choose? Low. So we can just get rid of the force normal. Because the torque due to the force normal will be equal to zero because the lever arm for the force normal is equal to zero, right? Because that force normal, we don't know. So if we can get it out of the equation, it's best for us. So we have then the torque due to the force of gravity of child one, torque due to the force normal, and the torque due to the force of gravity of child two. That whole thing adds up to zero. Please walk me through, Pooja, the directions of the various torques. Uh, so we'll just start by making, or 
by the Okay. And then they point it in the direction of the um And then you point your fingers down where it's Curl your fingers in the direction of the force. And then it's out of the board, so it's positive. So the torque due to force gravity one is positive. Keep going, Pooja. Uh, torque to the force normal? Puja, just complete? It's just like nothing because the, the sign is zero. Well, not there is no sign. Well, there is no lever arm. Because the lever arm is equal to zero. Please notice for a moment the force of gravity from each child, they're both down, right? The two forces are in the same direction. But notice that the torques are in the opposite directions because they're on opposite sides of the axis of rotation. Okay, so again, just substituting in the force times the lever arm times the sine of theta, we have force of gravity one times the lever arm for one times the sine of theta for one minus the force of gravity of child two times the lever arm for child two times the sine of theta for child two, which is equal to zero. So just so you know, let's identify here, this is going to be lever arm one, this is going to be lever arm two. Why are we, Andy, not going to substitute in mass times the acceleration due to gravity for the force of gravity, even though we often do? Because... Right, these are steps that we've gotten so used to, and a lot of times people will just keep going and then not know what to do from there. So it's an important one to realize. Carla? Because we already have the force of gravity. We don't have the mass. In this particular case, we know the force of gravity rather than the mass. So there's no reason to substitute that. Okay, so here we go. Force of gravity one is 300. Lever arm one, we do not know. Times the sine of 90 degrees. Minus force of gravity two, which is, I got to reverse. 400. 300 times lever arm two times the sine of theta two, which is 90, which equals zero. 400 times D1 minus 300 times lever arm two equals zero. One equation, one unknown. No, nope, sorry, two equations, one unknown. Not, not good. Anyway. One equation, two <laughs> unknowns. Regardless of what I said, you know what I meant. Okay. Denner. Yeah, you have to put D2 in terms of D1 by doing like length minus. Let's just do length is equal to D1 plus D2. Can you, rather than saying D, you could say lever arm one plus. It just tells you the more you're safe, the more you remember. So we can solve for example, we can solve for lever arm two. Lever arm two is going to be equal to the length minus lever arm one, or two minus lever arm one. So we can substitute in. We get 400 times lever arm one minus 300 times two minus lever arm one, which is equal to zero, or 400 times lever arm one minus 600 uh, plus 300 times lever arm one, which is equal to zero. Therefore, 700 times lever arm 1 is equal to 600. Therefore, lever arm 1 is equal to 6 divided by 7, which is equal to. Zero point eight five seven one four. And therefore, we need to locate this fulcrum 0 0.86 meters from the, which one, the 400 Newton shot. Notice the, you have to identify which child you are um, measuring from, because if we had solved for the other one, we would have gotten 2 minus 0 0.86, and it would be that distance from 300 to 